Vegan food is currently becoming an international trend, but plant-based diet has been a common practice among Rastafari in Jamaica for several decades and is known as ital food. Though there is much more to ital lifestyle than simply not eating meat. My name is Irina and this channel is about Jamaica. However, in all of my previous 47 videos, I deliberately avoided the topics in one way or the other related to Rastafari lifestyle, and that includes ital food. The reason? I haven't lived in a Rastafari community, I don't follow ital lifestyle, I'm not even a vegan, so I don't want to be that another journalist who just talks the talk but doesn't walk the walk. So instead, with this full-length documentary, I'd like to share my platform with an incredible family who left their corporate jobs to be promoting idle living right here in the center of Kingston. That's right, not in the mountains, but in the middle of a busy city. And we're going to this little oasis, Veggie Meals on Wheels. My name is Ibe Lyon. I'm the owner of Veggie Meals and Wheels. Originally, I'm from Kingston, Jamaica. Many first you see me and say I look like somebody from Zimbabwe. Some people say I look like from Ghana. But yes, some of my forefathers my, were from there, but I'm born in Kingston, Jamaica. So actually, Veggie Meals and Wheels is a family business. So my daughter, my wife, and myself are owners of the business, and we have different roles and responsibility. And you are in a no-bone zone right here in Kingston, Crossroads, Regal Plaza. Clean food, clean thoughts, clean hearts, clean liberty. Clean food, clean thoughts, clean hearts is our destiny. What are My name is Katis Oyonde. I am a social entrepreneur. I believe in, um, you know, empowerment, empowering oneself, and I also believe in self-sufficiency. I believe we all have a right to use what we have in this natural world that we live and create whatever we want. There is never a lack. We always have what we need. So the painting show depicts the fire pot cooking right here. <laughs> Painting is like oh, that, you know. Yes. If you notice, it's a container we have transformed into a. Oh, now this is a container, you know. This is a wonderful right. container. So we have transformed it by thematically. So here, if you see the kitchen, you see a pot boiling with fire coming around it. So right here, you would see the man with veggie meat is always going to the to the moon. This idea, this concept. Okay. Right, and then here you see like a submarine shining down into the water. The theme with the whales and the shark, and that's our logo right here. Oh yes. Yeah. How, uh, who uh, who yes. did the painting? We have, a, we have an um, artist, his name is Bogart. He's uh -huh. very um, well known in Jamaica. He paints a lot of very artistic around Kingston and even sometimes in the country too. Um, so he painted um, the Bob Marley too and the Buj Bantan, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I was just showing you the theme of the, of the <coughs> container. Yeah. You can transform a container into something that you want. Whatever your idea can come to reality. So we, as the kitchen is a fire theme. Here is the space and the submarine theme. Look in the, the roof, what's that? The cloud theme. Oh, it's yeah. like the outside. Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. Nature. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Look, look at it's an AC. Yeah, it's an AC. Oh, it's nice. It's, it's a fun on the AC. A fun on the AC. <laughs> If you are like me and might have assumed that oital food doesn't have much diversity of flavor, well, you're in for a huge surprise. And in my case, it began with quinoa. A lot of people, when they cook rice or quinoa or anything, 
-hmm. They just do it bland. But what makes the quinoa uh, aesthetically look proper and taste good is how you season it. So all these are going to go into the water for the quinoa. I'm going to shred the garlic mm -hmm. in the um, water for the quinoa. This is seasoning the water. Mm -hmm. All right. Some little thing. And of course, I'm going to put the turmeric too. Mm -hmm. So the turmeric gives the color, the yellow color for the, for the, um, for the quinoa. It changes so a little more. We did proportionately, you know? Mm, smells so, good. Mm -hmm. It's turmeric that gives that smell. Yeah, it is. Mm. If, you did, if you don't have the turmeric, you use the curry powder or the turmeric powder. Because mm -hmm. not everybody can access this in their country, you understand? Mm -hmm. If you notice, it, it can't tra changes the water mm -hmm. to yellow. Mm -hmm. And when, when, when you put all this on it with the quinoa, and it boils, it, all the flavor is absorbed into the quinoa mm -hmm. from this. I believe in the natural liberty because when I look around nature, it inspires me. And I draw my inspiration from that. As a result, we are vegans. Well, I would, I'd rather say Italians because before the word vegan was, was renowned, and the Rasta man or the Rasta woman from a long time, from the 1930s, who actually pioneered the Ital vibration within eating clean, eating Ital food. And then as time goes like technology, things become more um, upgraded and the vegan come in. And so we have to give the, the credence and the credibility to the root of the matter and the, the source of the Rastafarians who created this Ital liberty and lived it and propagated it until it reached a level where people take it and say, okay, it's vegetarianism or it's veganism. So we must never forget that root of Ital. So tell me the story how you became an Italist. Oh, I tell you, honest, all right. as an Ethiopian Orthodox uh, Christian, every year we have different fasting periods. As a matter of fact, on the Ethiopian calendar, we have like 250 days out of the year. Out of the 365 days, we fast 250 days. I was like about 16 going to 17, or maybe 17. And um, I said, let me try it. As a teenager, let me try the fasting, because I was old enough, you know? And on the fast, I put a protocol where you fast after midnight, you don't eat until after midday the next day. And while I was fasting and going through the fasting, 55 days, I did it successfully and I felt different in my body, I felt different in my spirit, everything. And the end, there were even some days I used to try and do a whole day fast. And I felt different, I felt a little weak, but my mind was very strong. So it helped to build me, my spirit more than my flesh, doing the fasting. And from that time when I fasted, um, that teenagers, I decided I won't go back to eating meat. So it was my being an idol was inspired by the, the fasting. So I grew up in, as I say, Orthodox community, which is Rastafarian living in the community. And I watched Rasta living and say that oh, we don't eat certain things before. Because even though I used to eat meat, like it was like chicken and fish and those. I, didn't even use, I never used to eat pork and those things. This is very important. Most people wanting to eat meat always just jump up and just stop eating meat. But it's a transition. It's a stage. And when you do it by stage, you find out that you, you endure more and you hold it more. For example, we're born as a baby, and then we grew up as a little girl, then a little teenage and adult. So when I was doing, after the fasting, and I said, I'm gonna stop eating meat, I started letting go like the heavy meat first, like the chicken, then the fish, then the sardine, then the mackerel, then the corned beef, and that's at, until I gradually. So I went through the stages of letting go the meat diet, and by, I didn't return from then. But what I find sometimes, people get up and they want to be vegetarian or vegan. They say, oh, get up and say, bop, or stop eating meat. And still, two months later, they go back to eating meat. So that's the problem. <laughs> you have to take it in stages, you know? The origins of the word oital derive from a Latin word vitalis, which means belonging to life. The word was first borrowed by the English as vital and then by Rastafari in Jamaica and became ital. In simple words, ital cooking is a way of preparing food that is consistent with Rastafarian lifestyle and beliefs. Ital food is essential for Rastafari because of one of the core spiritual concepts, known as liberty. For example, idol cooking doesn't allow meat because it is based on the belief that since meat is basically dead flesh, eating it would therefore work against liberty elevation. This is one of the reasons why idol food is often viewed as a vegan diet. However, it is not exactly so because idol is not just about food. And at the same time, a person doesn't have to be a Rastafari to pursue the concept of idol living. Ital food is natural. Let me say natural. I mean, it's like how the river come up from a spring 
and flow right down to the ocean. That's natural food. The river doesn't have a direct part. It does make its own way, you know, not like a systematic approach to things. So ital food is just getting things um, from different season, from the ground, from the tree, and putting it together to make a taste. Because originally when restaurants talk about ital food, it's really no salt, no process of speaking and cooking and eating naturally from the tree, whether fruits or vegetables. God rest his soul, my father is actually a police officer. And you know, Rastaman is a police of Babylon, you know what I mean? Meaning confusion and stuff. But you know, what the good thing about it is that my parents appreciate natural stuff because you know, most of us here were born in Kingston. Our parents are from the rural area. They coming from their parents being farmers and them have to eat what they grow and grow what they eat. So you actually get the opportunity to appreciate natural food. So it's after growing up and being taught by the Rastas and their liberty and their customs and their lifestyle, that's how I really evolved in learning how to cook idle food and knowing the real meaning of being an idolist. Idle cooking is a traditional Jamaican cooking without meat, processed foods, any additives or even salt or flour. Therefore, the challenge is that a good idle cook has to be exceptionally skilled at using available herbs and spices to produce food that is full of flavor. Cooking take patience and dedication, and most of my friends, they didn't have that patience to cook and make sure that the food tastes good and simmer down properly. They always been rushing the food for the put on the pot. They can't wait, they're watching it and counting to see when it is ready. So I always have that characteristics or uh, that patience for cooking. This is not really the first restaurant. It's after be moving from different restaurants to different restaurants. Then a decade ago, we came up with a name, Veggie Meals and Wheels, actually, because we've been moving. And then the no bone zone is because you know it's vegan. So nothing with bone is cooked here. Normally in Veggie Meals and Wheels Kitchen, we use polenta, we use bulgur. Mm -hmm. I use quinoa based on um, request. And I use brown rice regularly. We do like yam, banana, sweet potato, Irish potato. So what do you use instead of meat? The protein that we use, we use beans. So for example, we do stew, right? So today we do black bean stew, red pea stew, broad bean stew, black, uh, black eye pea stew, lentil stew. So you so kind of mix them and then you stir fry them or? Well, stew has to be cooked with, uh, with vegetables. So you cook, you have to give your class with that different. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, stew yeah. is like, it was explaining yesterday, is a pot of different things. So you would cut up the pumpkin, the Irish potato, the sea potato, the skelly and the onion and everything. I'm cook it down into coconut, in coconut milk and put in your thyme and your garlic and cook it in and it come out very nice and spicy. And, and it's, it's, and it's thick, pepper. it's like thick. thick. Yes, yeah, it's like pepper. thick. Okay, good. But the basis of the stew is always the peas. Uh, okay. Whatever bean you're using. Oh. So it's broad bean stew that, that becomes the body of it. And okay. you add the vegetables, the carrot, the pumpkin, and so forth. I got it. The yeah, the quinoa is in there, so it, okay. it bubbles. You see how it's well seasoned? Mm -hmm. And you see the, the color will change by the time it boils on. Because the thing with quinoa, look, Remember, you know, quinoa is like a rough seed, right? Mm -hmm. It's tough now. Mm -hmm. And this is going to boil right down to soft. Right. So this is going to be like the opposite of rice and peas. Mm -hmm. Quinoa and peas. Yeah, quinoa, quinoa peas. Quinoa peas, all right. Good. Yeah, so it's boiling Do you know now. why Jamaicans call beans as peas? It's just language. We call a lot of things by the name, which is not even the name. Like, <laughs> give, me, give me an example, Amy. So we say... Uh, pear. Pear, very good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so right. we just have a way to just but that's rename good. things. It's good because it's a Jamaican Creole language. It's a co colloquial way of looking right, at it. It's right. colloquial term. So we know the difference yeah. if we were to be tested like academically for it. Right. But we just categorize everything because they're all legumes. So we just call bean peas and peas bean. The main difference between vegan and idle food is a lifestyle. Because when you talk about idle food, you can't say you're eating idle food and wearing a lot of leather or a lot of things that make from animal. You're not going to be idle because idle is a preservation of, of the environment too. It's not just food. Some people get mistaken and think is that when they say idle food is just not eating meat. It's more of your customs, your attitude, your approach to things that make it idle, holistic approach. 
Of course, some people are vegans because of their ethical views, so they wouldn't use any animal products like leather, for example. But the easiest way to illustrate the difference between idle and vegan is with an example of processed foods like canned beans, pickled vegetables, or biscuits and cakes. They are plant-based and perfectly fine for vegans, but not okay for ITAL, because all of them have additives like stabilizers and salt and sugar. The Rastafarian movement that rose out of Jamaica, uh, they, that, that movement pioneered the ITAL liberty, the ITAL eating. To this day, we are even at that time when it was being promoted by a Rastafarian. Um, it was being... Um, this, we call it, you know, ostracized and, 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 and ridiculed. It's like, oh, I tell people you have to have some salt in your diet. You have to eat little sugar. The Rastas were being ridiculed for promoting I tell liberty from that time, from the 1930s up to possibly maybe the 1990s. Mm -hmm. You know, possibly 2000s too. Yeah. But it's only when people's life becomes threatened by health crisis that they began to look back and say, wait, the Rasta man was saying, we mustn't eat too much salt because it gives you blood pressure. You must eat too much sweet because you get diabetes and they realize the statistics processed are showing and the processed food. Yeah. And we're seeing statistics from Jamaica, America, all over that. Oh, too much salt, not good. Too much, you know, sugar. So they start making the link and doing the research and realize, oh, what the Rasta was saying was really true. But it took so many years to acknowledge it because what? Rastas were seen as minority, as nobody, as outcasts. So the stone that the builder refused has now become the head cornerstone. So the idol liberty, as I said earlier, has to get the Rasta people, Rasta man, Rasta woman, I forget the credit. Because they were not just propagating it, putting it in music and songs and lyrics and poems. They were living it and they're still living it today. Real Rasta still live idol. No matter what you try to call it, vegan, vegetarian is idol. Okay. We're going to do the quinoa. Uh -huh. First, while the quinoa cook, we're going to prepare the bamboo. Okay. So let's do... What's the name of the meal? Quinoa with curried bamboo shoot in coconut sauce. All right. Do Jamaicans often cook it or is this is something unique? Because this is something kind of different because most Jamaicans doesn't know about eating bamboo shoot. Bamboo shoot is a, is a young bamboo. It's more a Chinese, Asian dish. But as a, as a vegetarian, as a vegan, we are exploring the possibility of starting to serve bamboo shoot to utilize what we have because a lot of bamboo is grown in Jamaica and we don't understand how to maximize what we have because we just use bamboo here for, for wood and for furniture and for, you know, like for, for housing. But really, it is so versatile, you can eat it. So now, Veggie Meals on Wheels is exploring the possibility of, well, not really exploring, he's doing it. We're going to be using bamboo shoot, making a bamboo shoot meal. Okay. Because a lot of Chinese use it in Jamaica, but we as Jamaicans are going to use it. Oh, look at that. I thought they were small. I thought they were... Small. So while you wait on that, let's... let's, let's wait. Okay, so that. tell me about this. Bamboo, as you know, is one of the tallest grass. Uh-huh. And it's very dynamic. It's used for many things. Used for fabric, furniture, books, paper. But also it is good for food. You have to be the tender shoots. That's when the bamboo just starts to spring out of the ground. Um, so this is like a tender shoe, we peel it and we boil it and then it's very good now for food. So this is what it looks like? Yes. Okay. So this is like the root? That's like the root bursting out before it starts to, to grow, to go, in, to go into the actual bamboo tree. Right. So, so this, this is, is the root and it's yeah. edible? Edible. What kind of spices can you use in idle food? I mean, you don't use salt. A little? Yes, use a little sea salt or Himalayan salt. Try to use the best but salt. But original there is, Ital, you ne they never use, use salt. Never use salt. Original have, Rasta Ital have to say that. was really without salt. So for the point from the liberty, yeah. the salt was um, excluded mm -hmm. from the diet. Mm -hmm. Rasta tried to exempt from the MSG um, type of stuff. Yeah, we use natural seasoning like basil, oregano, parsley, cut the pepper. We use kelion, onion, garlic, thyme, pimento, of course, we use coconut milk. Coconut milk is a very integral part of Rasta cooking from a long time. We break a coconut and we get the water, we get the water from it, we get the, the, the milk from it and we get the trash. So you get three things in that coconut, right? So what we use the water to drink, then they use the milk to cook in the food, like to cook we down the, the protein. Trash. Yeah. Then the trash goes into our baking or the trash goes into our making our nugget. Right, so what, what do you do with this now? This is what you use to cut up. Maybe let me the knife, please. You're gonna cut this and catch water, like. Let me show you. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, you cut this up. Oh. This jelly coconut. This one is a hard coconut. Hard coconut. Not a hard, hard, but yeah. Sometimes you use some harder. You have different um, quality of coconut. Like the, the hard, hard one will be harder. This is a semi one, like not too jelly, jelly, but not hard, hard. Okay. In between. in there just water and coconut yeah all right let's see if it's ready see it's mm. ready so you see it's creamy eh? oh it's nice much better than the substance i make from the dry mm -hmm. one i buy in the supermarket you get the powder one uh, yes I get this the is a real deal so what do you do with the stuff that is left? Like, well, like, like normally I would put it in to make my nugget. I make a vegan nugget and I use the coconut trash in it okay. with sweet potato and those things. Like and I, nuggets? Yes, vegan so nuggets. Vegan nuggets. You're going to have it, some of it today. I have it made already. Okay. Yeah, but normally instead of throwing this away, mm -hmm. I would put this in the vegan nugget with um, sweet potato and pumpkin and season up. But what you have to understand, uh, in cooking, nothing wastes. Just like if you have an orange, right? Mm -hmm. You peel the orange and then the skin can be used for baking. Mm -hmm. And then the orange itself can be used to make juice. So I'm going to introduce oh, you to the nuggets yeah. now. Oh, These oh. nuggets were made. Well, as I was they saying, I was... They look like typical nuggets, look. Yep. Yeah, we made them like nuggets. Like regular chicken nuggets, kind of thing. Glute, this is gluten-free. Okay. No bread, no flour, no vegemins, nothing. This is mm -hmm. base of it, the sweet potato. And as I was telling you, we would put the, 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 the trash of the coconut in it uh -huh. and form it with seasoned onion, scallion, and garlic. I'm not going to give you all, but everything in this is, a, is vegan. Okay. It's a vegan nugget. So we believe in reuse of a recycle because when you recycle, you have to use machines, you have to use energy, you have to use oil, gas, um, parts. So that's the process that is, can also contribute to the to carbon footprints too. And we are trying to live a sustainable lifestyle. So we use everything, go back to the earth, the trash from the coconut, the shell, go back in the garden. They, if you make the juice and you have the thing you blend or you squeeze the pulp, go back to the source of root compose. and go back to the compost. And it's just a cycle in life. It's just a cycle you life. Get and you give back. Right. So we believe in reuse over recycle. And nothing is actually waste because, you know, we make our clothes from plants too and um, our roll-on, our toothpaste. So every byproduct is reused for, because we're part of nature. So with nature is in us and we are in nature. It's just a lifestyle. Something maybe you want to say to people who want to learn more about liberty, who want to learn more about ITAL living. The, the answer is in nature. Live close to nature and nature will never leave you because it is there. It is there for us to use. There's, everything is here to be used, you know. There's nothing wrong with being used. The problem is comes down when we abuse things. Yes. If rain falls, you make sure you catch water catchment. Yes. If bamboo you have and you don't have the money to buy in a block, use the bamboo. That's what we do here at Regimes and Weezer. We have people come here and say, boy, you're always improving. And they think we have a bag of money and we don't. We use the natural resources because natural resources is your wealth. It is our wealth and we don't realize. We think it's money is our wealth. You know what I mean? And it's a simple thing that is our wealth. The water, the sunshine, the earth, the dirt, the trees, the flowers, the plant. Every tree that you see on the earth has some use, has some purpose, has some benefit. But we don't take time to find out. We look and say, oh, I want a steak tomorrow. And when the color will look in the, in the face, it, it grow a while, you know? The color will grow a while, and you, you just chop it down as weed and throw it away. The moringa, the noni, all these things are around you every day. Can heal your fibroid, can heal your glaucoma, and you just don't realize. So we have to use what we have. Yes. We're making a plate, and we're going to eat from this side. We're going uh -huh. to put the food from here, Okay. and we're going to eat from here. Right. Yeah. I know that some people make an ashtrays. Yeah, with this. Make pen so like tray, a... pen trays, yes. coin. Uh -huh. You put this on their desk like an office, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so that's the bottom. Right, it's at the bottom, but mm -hmm. you can use on it's two like sides. It's like a cup. Right. Yep. I love these. Mm -hmm. They're so good. Yeah, so we're actually going to be sharing some food in here today. Oh. I'm sure the authenticity of the bamboo shoot. <laughs> in the bamboo, bamboo, served yes. in bamboo. Yes. <laughs> this is going to be a big cup. This one? Uh-huh. I'm going to still cut it here because I'm making two of this. Okay. 
So uh -huh. yes. I might make it identical. Our foundation is strong and we know where we're from. From, from, from. A long time we have sent the messages in our songs. That you are the direct descendant of the seed of Abraham. And you must take your rightful place in the human race. And don't look back on what forward where he's bound. And that's a fact. So tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. What are you waiting for? Come together, come together. Do you have a garden here or where do you get everything? Do you have it from here or do you buy it? Well, we outsource Both. our vegetables. And by doing that, we are promoting farming too in Jamaica. So we have, you know, different parishes have different crops. And we have people, old lady, old man, young people too. I want young people to invest in farming too. What we want for ourselves, that's what we want for our customers. Certainly. So we, we ensure that what we're getting is quality. And of course, we plant some tomatoes, we plant bamboo shoot, which is grow natural. So. Yeah, there are some things that we actually invest our time in watching it grow too. This is the kitchen that we use in terms of, you know, to show. Uh -huh. But we could do outdoor too, as I told you. Yeah. The fire, the, but when the whole idea is to show that you can use what you have. So we don't have the typical kitchen table, stainless steel here. We're doing this on a fridge, you, you, you see what's going on. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we have to just know that, you know, wherever you are with kitchen thing, you use what you have. So it's like the main kitchen is downstairs, but yeah. we're just here now right. just for the filming. Right, just mm -hmm. he's not here. Because the kitchen is now busy. Yeah. Working and serving clients. Right. Okay, this is a whole heap. We call it whole heap. In Jamaica we use the term whole heap to describe a lot of things, you know, right? I want whole heap of food. Whole heap of whole, whole heap? Whole. Whole heap. Whole heap. So it's a whole heap, like a lot. It means a lot in Jamaica. Okay. I need a whole heap of money. Right. I want a whole heap of food. You understand? You're going to teach me papa. Yes. <laughs> whole heap means like a lot. Okay. So we would say now, because we named this product whole heap. I think he'd be as, as the. Like a whole lot of. A whole lot. lot. A whole lot. Yeah. yeah whole heap so we use this uh -huh. because it's used in almost every dish. The only dish that this does using is not used in is like cereal, like porridge or cereal because it's a seasoning. Right. We can use it to make your pasta, use it to make your any protein, even meat. People who eat meat use it in their chicken, whatever. You understand? How do you make this seasoning? As I'm saying, it's, 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 yeah, it's, see, but it, it's a chemistry. So I use a proportion of the basil, oregano, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. parsley, cumin, uh -huh. celery, uh -huh. and I won't give you all the ingredients as, again. <laughs> I have to cut it by trade secret. All right, okay, okay. Right. There is always a secret spice. That yeah, goes everybody, KFC, everybody has it. Private and confidential. Mm -hmm. If you give it away like that, yeah. Although nowadays we live in this world, everything, nothing is hiding anymore. It's not hiding, but it's just marketing-wise, you know? Yeah. But in your case, you have a restaurant, so, right. you know. Trade secret is important. <laughs> I must admit, I personally thought that running your own business or being entrepreneurial does not fit the idea of living close to nature and being idle. To my surprise, this couldn't be further from the truth. So this yeah. is like our mission statement, mm -hmm. um, our green statement. Uh huh. Um, there are yeah. some different articles that we came into the newspaper and stuff. Oh, you were in the newspaper? Several times, yeah. That's one. That's another one right there. Jamaica Observer. Uh huh. Uh huh. And this is where we do the vegan cooking experience, the one that you know about. Right. The Airbnb. Uh huh. You do, you do it on Airbnb, right? Mm -hmm. right. And we do charity too. We normally used to serve um, a vegan meals once a week to the homeless. Oh. We kind of stopped it because it wasn't sustainable because we were just putting in uh -huh. and we really wanted to get like help with it. If we got like sponsorship, it would be more right. sustainable. Right. So we did it like for two years, from 2018 oh, wow. to 20 last year. So right? not even like once, twice, but for two years. Yeah, we did it for two years on our own. Oh gosh. You know, and we realized that boy, because we were, it's not like we were cooking different food for the homeless. We were mm -hmm. giving them from what we were serving. Right. So it was kind of heavy, you know, on us. So. It's, uh, it's not easy. Think? We need to wait for the COVID to be over. <laughs> a lot of business goes down, but guess what? What we do, uh -huh. from a corporate perspective on understanding business, mm -hmm. the last resort is to lock your business. If you used to serve 10 things on your menu, you, you start serve five. Mm -hmm. If it's too much, you serve four. If it's uh -huh. too much, you serve three. Uh -huh. Last resort, 
any business person will tell you the most successful is to lock. Either you consolidate, collaborate, whatever you do to survive, you, you must swim above the water. You mustn't sink. We were corporate people. We yeah. both have experience in corporate Jamaica. He worked at Red Stripe, I work at Grace Kennedy. Really? In the young days, yeah. Oh, wow. We two ex corporate people, but because we grew up in the Orthodox Church and we grew up in the Rastafarian community and understand the idea of self sufficiency, and we always believe that one of the functions of work when you do pub, um, principles of business, it teaches you that you must always try to gain the satisfaction of being your own boss. That's a principle of business that you learn in school. At Red Stripe, I mean, actually, I was trained as a mechanical engineer. That's what I went to school for. Um, so that was my work as a restaurant, as an engineer there. What, what made you change your mind? Like drop what you were doing there and start your own? I, I wouldn't even consider it as a job. I go higher. <laughs> I built up on it and take it to the next level. Yes. So I wouldn't even say I dropped it. I just raised the bar above and beyond. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> Why didn't you move out into the hills, for example? The hills, the, the city need purging, the city need teaching. Mm -hmm. And if everybody moves to the hills, then the youth are leaders stray. So they need examples, road models here. Mm -hmm. So we decided to sacrifice and stay among the poor, stay among the people who need knowledge. Because when you have knowledge, you conquer the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we're here among our people, teaching, sacrificing, staying with them. We hear a thing, but we want to get to the truth. There's a truth to everything. So where we hear, whereas you hear that, oh, Rastafari don't believe in business, and so it's a misconception. Rastafari always believe in self-reliance. That's the difference. The difference in burning Babylon and, and working in Babylon is the essence of self-reliance. I'm sure you heard about Marcus Garvey, who promoted the, the concept of one God, one aim, one destiny, self-government, self-reliance, race first, and all these things. He was a black nationalist. And of course, Rastafari and movement have been inspired by the Garvey movement. So even while working in corporate Jamaica, we have always aspired to have our own business. That's being ambitious. And we believe everybody should have that aspiration of being ambitious. You know, people be ambitious for different things. Right. As young people working in these corporate entities, as being vegetarian, vegans, because we're vitalists. Couldn't find a lunchtime, everybody in the lunchroom. They're eating them chicken and everything, and the lunchroom off of food, cook load. You can't get no vegetarian food. We started our, our business at Grace Kennedy and Red Stripe. So he started making With juice. food? Yeah. No, he brought juice to sell at Red Stripe, doing work in there. <laughs> and I started making patties. I used to make vegan patties. So when I want to eat, I, I have it. So you worked at Red Stripe before. You don't yes. drink alcohol, do you? <laughs> Occasionally, if we look at red wine or if a celebration, because we do have festive season in Ethiopia right now, we're going through a fasting period, which is great Lent. But after the fasting is feast, even Christ himself turned water into wine. So as Katie said earlier, it's not how you use it, but if you abuse it, it becomes a problem. Alcohol is fermentation of sugar cane and natural stuff. But if you get intoxicated where you tumble down and bust your head, then that's become a problem. Abuse. Yes, abusing. So we designed our job in 2002. You were very young, at like 22, 23. Our parents, very, you know, mother of a family, very said, why you go to school and, and leave them companies there? You shouldn't do that. But we were very passionate because we believe we we're pushing our Garvey concept of self sufficiency, self reliance, wanting to build our own empire. Nothing is wrong with that. If you want to build your own empire, you do that. So, and if I want to be my issue alone, I should do I should not watch you doing yours or you watch me. We're free. We're free human beings. There is no such concept as Rastafarianism because Rastafari don't use ism, so it's just Rastafari. The other thing I noticed while doing the research is that a lot of people might have never heard of Ethiopian Orthodox Christianity, and if they see an Ethiopian Orthodox Christian in Jamaica, they would most likely assume that he or she is a Rasta without knowing if there is even a difference. But look, this video is about ITAL food, so I'm not going into the depth of spiritual part of this topic, yet we still need to acknowledge that even up to these days, most people barely know anything about Rastafari or about the link between Jamaica and Ethiopia. As I grew up and learned about Rastafari, Tradition. it was always a liberty. 
It was always a movement. Yeah. But as, as you know, people always changing. If you, it's, it's a communication. Sister if I whisper man. something in his ear, yeah, and I have 10 people right here, by the it time it reaches 10 persons, it's been distorted. So I say, this lady is videoing me right now on the camera. And by the time it reaches the person at the front, he said, yeah. he's shooing at the bambala. And something else is <laughs> said. So what happened over the years and within Rastafari is that people will say Rastafari evolve and stuff, but at the same time, it have a root. Yes. And the root is that it was always a movement of empowerment, a movement of cultural and clean liberty, a movement of truth and spirituality, a movement of freedom and liberation and self self-sufficiency. And those things, those those core values never change. So no matter how people try to mix it up and say, oh, it's a religion, that's all in the mixing up of the thing. But the core value and the root of Rastafari was always embedded in the cultural liberty. Did it come from Ethiopia or Jamaica or? Well, Jamaica, of course, Ethiopia has always been our inspiration because Ethiopia has been an inspiration to Rastas within Jamaica because of its um, sovereignty of being the only nation in Africa that was not colonized. And anybody would want to um, affiliate with some power such as that to know that, okay, this country having thought of colonialism has given me the strength to stand as a, as a people with dignity and knowing who we are and where we came from. So that's why Ethiopia has always been highlighted in Africa as that, that torch, you know, the horn, as a matter of fact, it's called the horn of Africa. When people ask the question about is there a difference between Rastafari and Ethiopian Orthodox mm -hmm. Church, I cannot say, I cannot answer it or you want me to answer it to say, oh, there's a difference. I want to answer it in truth to say, well, mm -hmm. the Rastafari has always advocated for Ethiopianism in Jamaica. Right. And Ethiopianism, even in, in the world. So uh, Rasta in Mexico advocates for Ethiopianism because, as I said earlier, Ethiopia wears a beacon and it's a, it's a beacon of light for liberation in Africa and liberation in the world. Right. And so, because this place holds the ancient um, Christianity before it was, we were indoctrinated around here in Western theology, it's something that we have to hold on to and prize. <laughs> Because in orthodoxy, as the orthodox, mm -hmm. the cross represents, it is our strength, it's our might, it's the medicine of our soul. You know, it's an Ethiopian cross, and it, 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 that's what it, it means to us. The cross is our might, the cross is our strength, the cross is our ransom, the cross is the medicine of our soul. Because we know that Christ died for us on the cross, and we wear the cross as a symbol of helping him to carry the cross, and knowing that he came down from heaven to earth to save man. So this is a symbol of our, our Christian ancient Christian belief. But it does Right, it Christianity. looks very different from the cross right. that the Western Christianity. That's what I'm saying. This is an ancient Christianity. In Africa, existed before European went to Africa. You know, this is original. It's not borrowed, it's not copied, it's original. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It does remind me of Ankh. Yeah. Like, you know, in ancient Egypt, of Ankh. Too, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yes, it's very similar. Yeah. All right. So, okay. This is almost ready. This is almost ready. All right, let's do that. This spice is from all the way from Ethiopia. It's, oh. If you know about Ethiopian cuisine, it's called Burberry. And Burberry is like Ethiopian pepper. Oh. But it makes the food spicy and smells good and everything. Oh. Oh. It's, a, it's what every Ethiopian use in their dishes. You can't go to an Ethiopian restaurant and don't see or taste Burberry. It's called Burberry huh? in the thing, but it's very good. This Burberry that the Ethiopians use, they say it has in 26 ingredients. Is it hot? Is it like... Yes, it's, a, it's pepper. The word Burberry means pepper in Amharic. So it's just Ethiopian pepper. You know, you're studying Ethiopian language, right? So you, you kind of know some words from there. <laughs> tell me. Uh? Yeah, no, like Tene. Tene means our, um, how wishing you good health. Greetings. Tene is Tene. Or Salamta, which means greetings. Or Amasa Gunalehu means thank you. you how, how do you say thank you in Ethiopian? Amasa Gunalehu. And you say, please, Ibako. Ibako. You know, people are going to watch from Ethiopia. 
That yeah. would be good. Well, in Jamaica, we, we believe that Ethiopians are blood brothers. So we, we, we oh, studied the curry. language, yeah. This is, this is, yeah, this is the curry. Because mm -hmm. it's going to be curried bamboo shoot. You see, you know, they prepare it like how people that prepare regular protein. So these are bamboo shoots? Mm -hmm. Oh, they, they look like chicken. I'm telling you. <laughs> bamboo chicken. <laughs> bamboo chicken. Now he's coming to call. Special request. I'm Mr. Williams. I represent. Veggie meals and wheels. I'm done now. You know, your natural food now we're placing you know. up. Now bone in the palace. Watch out. Some veggie meals and wheels now me place me a Christian. I tell food that a natural sitna. Back in 2018, Veggie Meals on Wheels launched a cooking workshop on Airbnb Experience platform to share their passion for idle food and lifestyle with others. And it became an instant success despite being located in Kingston, a city that is not as popular with tourism as some other parts of Jamaica. It's all so bright, you know, your, your, your clothing, the food, the paintings, that like, it's a, yes, it's so good. I think it's a good idea you put it on Airbnb as experience. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Mm -hmm. I hope, you know, once this... Granted, that people, everybody can cook, people want to learn to cook. Mm -hmm. I just hope this COVID thing is over and people start coming to Kingston more. Yes. Because I've noticed that not that many tourists come to Kingston. Mm -hmm. They're like avoiding Kingston. Because of the perception on international arena, because they perceived Kingston to be like violent, but like anywhere, LA, mm -hmm. New York City, in every city you have bad and good, mm -hmm. disadvantage and advantage. Kingston is no different. So it's just a matter of perception and propaganda sometimes with Kingston. Because there are some people who come to Jamaica and come to Kingston and just don't come to downtown. But you have you have different you have mountains in Kingston, you know. You understand me? You have mountainous part of Kingston, you have the high end, the low end, the middle end, but every end balance out. Because you see, even going to the rich part of Kingston, sometimes you have to drive to the poor part. The poor can do that, the rich, and the rich can do that. Is it very strong difference between people in Kingston who live in a so-called upper town and downtown? Is there like a big difference? I think the difference is in one's mind. Because you see, downtown and uptown is a mentality for me. I don't see the, the, the geographical location where a person lives as an uptown or downtown. Because there are people who would live uptown with a terrible mentality. A, a, you know? A terrible mentality. And people would say, oh, they can't believe they live uptown. And then you have people living in the ghetto or the inner city who have good and respectable mentality. You know? So you can't judge a person by where they live. It's the content of the character that matters. You see know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Right? A little sample. I think it has to cut, it has to cut down to me. Mm -hmm. I'll cook it down. You can sample a piece though. Ah, okay, let me try. Okay. Mmm. Right. And when it cut down, it's gonna soften it too, like a cabbage. You see, if you notice how it cut and it looks like cabbage. It does. It is. Mm -hmm. And it's it's also not too soft, which is good. It's kind of crunchy. Mm -hmm. But it's crunchy in a good way. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. I should have come really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, when when I'm filming, when we're staying like at the distance, I'm not wearing a mask. But once I have to come close, I put on the mask. <laughs> the COVID rules, crazy. Yeah. You know what? It's like curry. Curry comes from India. Yeah. This is the main spice of India. Yeah, but no, what makes curry is the turmeric. You know that, right? Right, right. Bamboo comes from China. And the meal we're cooking is kind of a mix of Chinese, Indian, Jamaican, Ethiopian. I'm telling you, it's like one oh. meal that represents Jamaica like out of many what of people. Many ones, right. Wow. You're going to come down to the nice, you know? Mm. Wow, you don't <laughs> no. need to taste the sweetness of the sauce, you know? Uh huh. So you put it on your hand? Yeah. We don't put it in our mouth. Some people go like this and go, we don't do that. We, we do like this. Put a little bit in your hand and taste it. It's good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Now this is like a feast. I was gonna film just one dish. Food is like that. Food is a family thing, you know? It's a family business. So how do you feel about it? Like, do you have like special roles? Like you cook and you yeah, do the yeah. like bookkeeping or it's the other way around? Like how do you um, assign the roles? Very, 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 very important question because I talk to a lot of people and say they can't work with their partner. It's difficult to work with a partner because you see them every day. You're, and then you have to know how to separate the, 
emotions from the business and making decisions. But the good thing is that she's not just my wife, she's my friend, she's my mentor, she's my sister. So it's, you have to know how to categorize and when professionalism is one of the most important things too. And you can't get too upset about things that doesn't matter are not going to have any lasting effect. So we split the roles and where I fall off, she picked me up where she fall off, I pick up. Reminding each other about stuff and the, one of the most important thing, we don't compete against each other or compare. Uh, we empower each other. So that make us like a pot of stew. <laughs> How long have you been together? 20 years. 20? Amazing. I wanted to answer that question too. <laughs> go on, go on, go on. Yes. Well, you know, it's a very, um, it's a very important question that you ask because people have always wanted to know, like, like it's, a, it's a secret. What is it that makes you work with your partner? So long when people always have problem working with their partner, as you said. But we have always kind of assured ourselves that, you know what, we work like the brain and the body. The, like, like the spirit and the body rather because the spirit cannot function without the body neither the body function without the spirit so if we have it like that i will say i'm the brain you're the body or we can take exchange rule you're the you're the body i'm the brain or you're the brain you understand we, we exchange rules so we always need each other to function and make and create efficiency our slogan is that everyone has the right to eat healthy yeah. no matter where you're from because we're all one blood we're all made in the creation and likeness of the almighty whether you're from Ukraine, you're from Europe, Australia, Africa, Africa China. North, South America, Mexico, no matter where you're from, the same blood runs through your vein. We're all one people. So everybody has the right to know the right thing, eat the right food. Because good food equals good mood. Right. So here in Crossroads, as we mentioned, is a corporate area where not a lot of domestication. So the people that work at the banks, the insurance companies, the teachers, the lawyers, the doctors, they come to be a part of our liberty, our lifestyle, and experience the ambience. Something I lock up in the office, does the AC, the phone, um, just the paper. So when you step out of the office, you can step in a, a place. Within Kingston, that have over 14 tree, fruit trees, different fruit trees. Mm -hmm. It's like a step inside of Mother Earth, Mother Nature within the city. Yes. So we got a lot of that from not just tourists, but also locals. Mm -hmm. But especially tourists, when they come, it's not just food alone. They can reason too. Mm -hmm. Because reasoning is a big part of learning and rejuvenation mm -hmm. by talking and understanding. And I learn from them as well too. Sure. So it's a reciprocal type of vibration. Yes. That would say to persons living outside of Jamaica, would I be Jamaicans, because there's a lot of Jamaica lives outside of Jamaica, <laughs> and just to my global family, we're all one family. If you come here to Jamaica to have food, to listen to music, to just have a conversation, we are saying that we will synchronize our thoughts, our mind, our bodies, our soul, and just know that you're family. Family is everything. We are all one family. And a lot of things are good. Perception is there. Jamaica is violent. A uh, lot of things going on. But everywhere in the world, you have to be careful. You can't just step out of your bathroom and slide and something can happen. Uh, there's things going on all over. But the most important thing is, is what you receive from where you go. So I'm saying Jamaica is nice. We say one love. A lot of wood and coconut water. Rivers and beach. We know uh, now is a pandemic. There's a good time too, because Jamaica have over 50% of the world healing herbs, mm -hmm. and the rest of them have more than 70% of the knowledge how to utilize that herb. Mm -hmm. So when you sit and read with that rasta, you're getting food for your mind, your body. body, and your soul. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to see you and have some good vibes and just know that you are family here in Jamaica. Thank you for um, listening and sharing the goodness of, of liberty and life and love and nature and using what we have to, you know, feed ourselves and help each other. Blessings. Blessed love. Blessings. Blessings. Don't let the shades of your skin fight the love that you within. Not your differences, but the vibrations you bring. Vibrations you bring. Free yourselves and win. Mama Africa calling. One voice, one heart, one kin. Now that you know, what are you waiting for? Come together, come together. Calling from near and far. Of the kings and the 
good, you're a star Born to be great, it's not too late Live by works and live by faith 